Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part three for this news bulletin today, Thursday, October 4th, 2012. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So this first article I have up says 62% of Americans support the targeted killing initiatives. Increased 90% of those surveys condemn American drone strikes followed closely by Egypt's 89%. Drone strikes are also condemned in Jordan, 85%, Turkey, 81%, Spain, 76%, and Brazil, 76%, along with Japan, 75%. And this comes before this article. Drone strikes kill five alleged al-Qaeda suspects in Yemen. President Obama's redefined imminent threat to apparently including setting up roadside checkpoints in far-off Yemen. A drone strike bombed two cars in southern Yemen on Thursday, killing five people allegedly suspected of belonging to the al-Qaeda link group. Uh, Ansar al-Sharia. Witnesses said the drone fired four missiles at the two cars. The two cars are still burning and we couldn't get close to them because the drones are still hovering in the area, said a local resident, wary of now the notorious follow-up strikes. I, I think we covered that before. I know we did. Called double taps, which targeted rescuers fleeing to the bomb sites to help their companions or comrades. Goes on and it said that uh, gunmen suspected of having links with Al-Qaeda had earlier arrived in vehicles and set up a checkpoint on the road linking Siad with Atak. Apparently, the Obama regime thinks setting up roadside checkpoints in far-off Yemen demonstrates an imminent threat to the security of Americans. It is kind of interesting, you know, in Turkey, 81% against drone strikes. In Turkey, they're actually, their people are protesting against what they're doing, their governments. And it's weird because the Turkish ship was attacked by Israeli forces and they didn't do a damn thing about it. And yet, um, when the rebel terrorists at the West are supporting fire mortar shells and kill some of their people, all of a sudden it's basically they're declaring war. U.S. official says there's military action needed in Mali in Africa. The apparent haven of radical Islamists in Mali is a consequence of U.S. interventionism now justifying further intervention. We have a top U.S. official told the AP that military action will be needed to eliminate radical Islamists uh, from the haven they developed in northern Mali. Also says that he told reporters that the thuggery and terrorism that these extremist militants are responsible for must be dealt with through security and military means, which can help establish a strong, credible government. In other words, a government that's conducive to the Western's exploitation of the resources, right? That's how it always goes. Carson's statement is notable for several reasons. First, the apparent safe haven that these militant Islamists have in northern Mali is a direct result of U.S.-NATO war in Libya. When mercenaries returning from Libya waged a military coup in Mali, extremists flooded to the area to take advantage of the resulting power vacuum. That their presence is now justifying further mili military intervention is ironic, to say the least. The truth is, is in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and Libya, and Somalia, problems of extremism and terrorist groups worsen following intervention. So why would intervening in Mali be any different? Is a mystery. Uh, remember this article, Intervention in Mali, France launches Operation Sabre in West Africa from September 26th. France has announced a deployment of military mission dubbed Operation Sabre to rescue its nationals held hostage and flush out Islamist terror groups in West African region. Some of the operations and missions would be based in Burkina Faso, Niger, uh, Mauritania, and Chad. And when you go back to the little map here, there's the uh, Mauritania. And also there's Niger and Burkina Faso. And of course you had what Cote d'Ivoire, which was where Bagbo was taken down around the same time Libya was, which created the instability in Algeria and all that. So just like Cote d'Ivoire and Libya, Francis, uh, they headed up that. Now they're going to probably head up this because they're facing the heaviest consequences from these terror groups that they helped create, right? With the several of the citizens killed over the past five years while some are still being held hostage by Al-Qaeda-supported groups. White House secret meetings examine al-Qaeda threat in North Africa from October 1st. White House has held a series of secret meetings in recent months to examine the threat posed by al-Qaeda franchise in North Africa and consider for the first time whether to prepare for unilateral strikes, the U.S. officials said. Remember, this is coming after the whole Coney 2012 uh, deal. I think that it just fell flat on its head, especially when the creator of the, of the film was found what... Uh, what was he going around walking around naked or masturbating in public or some crazy thing like that? And of course, the guy is most likely dead, according to uh, locals. So the Washington Post article goes on. It says the deliberations reflect concern that Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda's African affiliate, has become more dangerous since gaining control of large pockets of territory in Mali and acquiring weapons from post-revolution Libya. 
So they're trying to make a connection between the September 11 attacks on the U.S. compounds in Libya uh, with these discussions about going into Mali. And hopefully you remember this article too from September 26 that I covered U.S. France seek African force in Mali. Editors note, let's not forget the U.S. European misadventure in Libya created this problem and NATO trained paramilitary forces left Libya and occupied their southwestern neighbors in Mali. Is it possible that those well-trained fighters in Syria may relocate as well? The U.S. and France want the United Nations to back an African-led peacekeeping force. I'm sure that's what they're going to be doing to restore order in northern Mali where Turek militants and al-Qaeda-affiliated terrorists have expanded their reach since the March coup against the civilian government in Bamako. So maybe this is what they mean by African peacekeeping force. Islamists in Mali recruit, pay for child soldiers. Across northern Mali, Islamists have plucked and paid for as many as a thousand children from rural towns and villages devastated by poverty and hunger. Some of them are getting paid, uh, what is this, um, $30 a day, 15,000 francs or $400 a month for his family, an enormous sum for a boy who had just turned 16. The AP had found several dozen interviews with residents, human rights officials, four children or youth, and an Islamic official. They saw other children with machine guns, and Westerners can no longer go because of the threat of kidnapping. So this is now starting to come to the news cycle, the humanitarian crisis that's taking place. we got to help humanity, right? Amnesty International censors rights violations by South Sudan Army, saying that they're looking into shocking human rights violations against civilians by its security force. Following the wave of ethnic violence that broke out in late December of 2011, South Sudan security forces started a disarmament campaign in volatile eastern state. And just like everywhere else, like in Libya where they used the militias and now they're getting out of hand, and you have what, the African states would help combat terrorism in the region, help Mali reorganize its military and re meet future needs, right? And then you look at these guys and, uh, you know, this is the West. This is France. This is all of them coming in there and putting in their, their puppet dictators and uh, their uniforms. They got uh, uh, AK-47s and stuff like that. And where do you think that they learn these uh, these schemes of, of what? These reports by the human rights saying this, the soldiers are firing at civilians, tying them up with rope and submerging their heads in water in the disarmament scheme to disarm them. They're getting it from, you know, like the uh, agencies and that, intelligence agencies. They go down and they teach them how to do this stuff. And when it gets out of hand, they got to come back in and try to fix what they, what they screwed up. U.S. tells Rwanda to denounce Congo's M23 rebels. The U.S. has called on Rwanda to publicly denounce the rebels who have set up a parallel government in the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Says Assistant Secretary of State says the M23, which was the March 23 movement, is led by individuals who are international criminal court indi uh, indictees, I guess, is led by people who carried out serious human rights violations, so it should not be too much to ask the government of Rwanda to do this. Rwanda has repeatedly denied the charges that is backing the movement. I have some possible suspects that can go on that international criminal court list. But then we come to this article, right, and this kind of ties it all together. This kind of like made me shake my head, scratch my head, and like, what? U.S. waives sanctions on states using child soldiers for security interests. The Obama regime has waived nearly all U.S. sanctions against the countries using child soldiers despite a recent executive order to fight human trafficking. So Obama issued a memorandum on Friday waiving sanctions under the Child Soldiers Protection Act of 2008 for Libya, South Sudan, and Yemen that Congress legislated to halt the U.S. arms sales to countries that are worse abusers of child soldiers in their militaries. After such a strong statement or statements against the exploitation of children, it seems bizarre that Obama would give a pass to countries using children in their armed forces and using U.S. tax money to do it, says Jesse Evans, Senior Policy Advisor for Child Protection at World Vision. So, see, there you go. So, talk about human rights, right, and double standards and uh, how they want to get an African force for Mali, well, they got it. <laughs> Just like uh, taking the MEK, the Mujahideen, off the terrorist list just recently. Why? Because they're going to use that terrorist organization that was listed on the Secretary of State's, uh, State Department's own website. Now they're not terrorists anymore all of a sudden. Well, why do you think that? Because they're going to use them. They're going to use them like puppets. Just like the uh, leaders, the puppet dictators that the West puts in there. Uh, just like these soldiers that are desperate for work and will take the money uh, to shoot on their own people net and protect the dictators who are protecting Western outside interests. 
and um, just like these uh, children that are going to be exploited as well. And what is it for? It's about the resources, right? You don't want a, a sovereign nation to divide up its resources and uh, uh, give it to its people, like nationalizing oil and stuff like that. You want to make sure you privatize things, uh, that uh, you get it in the hands of just a few people, and uh, they don't really actually do anything, but they get paid the most money. So like in Libya, a lot of that money, the oil wealth, went back into the country's social system. Well, they don't like that, and that's why they're going to um, not just West Africa to rape them, but to East Africa as well, like in Somalia, where you have Canadian oil companies in the UK are going in there trying to get their oil resources going as well, and also uh, steal their trade routes from them. The potential power of West African oil to the economics and energy security interests of Euro America of the 21st century. The strategic resources of West Africa have attracted Europeans, Americans, Arabs, and lately Asians, uh, it says here, to have political and economic relations with West Africa. The historical significance of the European-African relations from the slave era through colonization is that European territories in Africa became the treasure lands for the strategic resources deemed necessary for European development. And some of those routes, trade routes I'm talking about, like in Somalia and the Gulf of Aden, that's to help carry the oil as well. Uh, energy New Front in Economic Warfare says opposition leaders in Canada suggest a string of cyber security threats, blah, 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 the work of Chinese hackers. And it says, in the meanwhile, the U.S. Uh, Obama regime said national security interests trump energy concerns and block the Chinese company from constructing wind turbines. But like I mentioned in yesterday's video, that a commenter made a really good point, which is they're putting this out there possibly to condition people to be ready for some kind of cyber attack on infrastructure or the money system. Um, and that will be a pretext to attack Iran, saying that, ooh, Iran did it. And then they can go ahead and take all of their phony uh, uh, money, their digital currency and fiat currency and, that, and all the debt that they racked up and, and deficits and wipe it clean. But like, uh, who was it? Hamilton, I think, believe he was the first Secretary of the Treasury, said, you know, we've got to take on debt, right? Public debt is a, is, is a blessing, so, and that's what they'll do. So I'll put you, in, uh, again, into further uh, serfdom. Then the gold. Is Liberia the next West Africa gold hub? And I love the part in uh, Deadwood, that series Deadwood, uh, where, the, uh, where the black guy comes back from Africa to see his, his mom, who's a cook for George Hirsch, and he's like, oh, Liberia, you know? saying how shitty it was. Almost alone among West African states, the gold exploration and mining sector is mostly past Liberia, and it goes on and says because of, um, uh, because of brutal uh, strife, basically wars and stuff like that, and now it's starting to calm down, so they want to go in there and uh, explore, exploit, right? But then you have gold fields telling miners to pack and go. Now, this is in South Africa. Remember all of those miners getting shot down? trying to strike in that and get better wages. The leading gold mine in South Africa started evicting thousands of its striking workers from company dormitories on Tuesday as work stoppages spread to more gold and platinum mines. Workers at another mine, a very good African-sounding company belonging to Anglo-American Platinum, <laughs> downed tools on Tuesday and the firm held disciplinary hearings for the strikers. So the strike from September 9th slowed production by 1,400 ounces of gold per day and the strikes have spread like wildfire in South Africa since the deadly work stoppages. Remember me talking about these tungsten-filled gold bars? This article from the 23rd I've been holding on to. Gold counterfeiting goes viral. Ten of these tungsten-filled gold bars are discovered in Manhattan. So they reported on it before about in Manhattan. The district promptly went viral as it meant to a tungsten-based gold counterfeiting operation previously isolated solely to the UK and Europe had crossed into the Atlantic. So it's going on there saying that the gold inventory on the 47th Street has been polluted and that dealers promptly checked the purity of their gold. At least 10 more of these fake 10-ounce gold bars filled with tungsten have been discovered. An owner of the Express Metal Refining says it has the entire street on edge. I and others on the street work off the truss now that truss is strained. It says here a, a guy with a master's degree and a specialist in the industry purchased the four fake bars from a well-known Russian salesman with whom he had done business with. With false flags rampant these days, we would not be surprised if this was merely yet another attempt to discredit gold. And Vladimir Putin, remember this, is buying gold as fast as he can. As supplies are low and prices surge to a record, gasoline stations in California are shutting down.
Thank you.